Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego and today I'm joined by Krista Grasso who is over the other side of the country in Connecticut. How are you doing, Krista? I'm doing great. How are you tonight? Excellent. Very good. And Krista is the creator of the Lean Out Method. She strongly believes in simplicity and focus are the keys to crafting a superior business. Uh, and uh, and today, what we want to actually talk about is your strategy for growing a business, one that doesn't result in you being overworked and overwhelmed. And let's face it, Chris, when most people think about starting a business, they kind of pretty much expect to be overworked and overwhelmed, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so what, is your, what is your method and how, can you, how do you teach people not to be so overworked and overwhelmed and be, be smarter? And I like what you say, intentional with your time, which I think a lot of people um, could learn from. <laughs> I think honestly, that word intentionality is so incredibly important. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I really specialize in is I help businesses to accelerate turning their vision and goals into reality, but to do it in a way where they can avoid burnout and avoid the overwork and over overwhelm. Because as you mentioned, especially when you're first starting a business, you're kind of wearing a lot of different hats. You're trying all the things, <laughs> you're doing all the things, and it can get very overwhelming very quickly. And the reality is when you really want to scale your business up and you really want to grow, you can't maintain that. That's not sustainable right. over time. It's just not healthy. And plus, you don't want to constantly have to be sacrificing your family and friends and those things that are important to you. So what I teach people is it, through the Lean Out Method is a process I call Lean Strategic Planning. And so it's really pretty simple, yet so many business owners don't do it. And it's starting with getting super crystal clear on what your vision is. Mm -hmm. Where is it that you want to go in your business and why is that important to you? And I always recommend people think of their vision in a few different facets. So not just where they see the business in the future, where right. they see themselves and the type of business that they want. Um, they probably don't see a business where they're working 24 by 7 in the future, <laughs> right? So what does that look like? And what does their customers look like in the future as they're helping them as well? And then you really take that vision and systematically break that down so that your day-to-day -day activities are in support of your vision and goals. And it just yeah. eliminates so much noise and waste and so much time that gets spent on things that truly aren't value-add. Yeah, because I think there's a, there's a couple of things there to, to focus in on. I think number one is uh, figuring out who your ideal and who your target customer is. But then there's always the temptation, isn't it, when, you, when somebody starts a business, is that suddenly they grab any customer. And mm -hmm. then you start to stray outside of your vision. Maybe you start to uh, you know, have to kind of configure your product or service differently. And suddenly you're you're going after everything and you're and you're not really focused and maybe going after everything means you end up buying business that's not profitable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I see that all the time with businesses I work with. I'm sure you see that a lot too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are some of the ways of avoiding that, of making sure that you don't fall into the trap? Because obviously, if, you, with, if, if cash flow is an issue, you're going to grab anybody who's, who says they're going to pay you. Yeah, absolutely. So when I think about the, the very early stages of business, when you're in that startup or emerging stage, to me, I feel like every decision that you make has to be directionally aligned. Mm -hmm. And as you move into the later stages of business, you want to make sure that every decision you make is very strategically aligned. And so that all starts with that directional alignment is, is this customer a customer that I want to work with? Or are they directionally a stepping stone to get to the customer that I want to right. work with? And if that's true, then absolutely work with them. If it's so night and day different and it's going to take you down a path that ultimately is not in line with your business, you have to kind of sacrifice that short term for the long term because that's how you build sustainable success in your business. Yeah. And then there's another thing that you mentioned there about sort of looking forward yourself and seeing, you know, what role or how you want to work in the business and your role. And I think that's one of the things that um, a, lot, a lot of entrepreneurs or people starting businesses don't think about. They don't think about, OK, when this is up and running, what am I actually best at? Because as you say, you wear multiple hats and then maybe you assume, well, I'm going to be the CEO of the company and I'm going to direct everything. But maybe that's not what you're best at. Yeah. And so that brings up a couple things. So A, I always fully believe you should play to your strengths and you mm -hmm. should hire out for your weaknesses. Um, but I think that that translates into a lot of waste and extra time in your business that does 
uh, result in that overwork and overwhelm too, when you apply that more broadly, where as business owners, I think we have this deep desire to fix what's not working. And so if we're not good at something, we want to get really good at it. If there's something that's not working or performing as well in our business, we want to fix it. And in doing so, we sometimes ignore the things that are working and we ignore what our strengths are. And focusing on the things that are working and focusing on the strengths are the things that actually accelerate your success. You want to eliminate really quickly the things that aren't working in your business and you want to hire out or bring on team members for the things that aren't your personal strengths or your personal zone of genius or something that you're just passionate about. And and to be honest, I mean, it's easier now more than ever to to find those resources, you know, whether full time or contract. I mean, you can find them across, depending on what your business is, but you can find them across the globe. And I think the other thing is today, Chris, I think you'd agree is with any business, and it doesn't really matter what kind of business is, um, there's a lot of very specialized things and specialized skills. And these may be skills that you don't need all the time. Uh, and you may only need at certain junctures during the year. And so being able to go and find that expertise and use it for a period of time or whatever is critical. Otherwise, as you say, you start to try and teach yourself a lot of these skills and you end up being mediocre at best at them. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's so true. It's finding help, especially today, you know, with the state of so many people looking for work and so many really highly skilled people looking for work. It's really very easy to either bring on a full time team member or a, a freelancer or that specialist that you have on call for those special projects when you need them. And so it's well worth the time investment to find those people. And I always recommend start with referrals. Find somebody who you trust who's worked with somebody. It just cuts out so much time and, and gets you to a good result really quickly. But that is going to be one of those things that really does also accelerate your results. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and I think one of the other things that's really interesting, you talk about staying focused and, and keeping things simple. Uh, those are two things. It's amazing. This has always uh, fascinated me through, throughout my career. Is number one, how hard it is for people to focus uh, because generally speaking, if you focus, it means that you have to eliminate other things, right? Mm -hmm. And focus in on something. And people don't like that, don't like eliminating things. It's like whenever you have those strategic planning meetings and you say, you know, what do we need to do next year? Everybody comes up with loads of ideas. And then you say, okay, well, what do we need to stop doing? And then there's silence. <laughs> <laughs> Completely. <laughs> yeah. So how do you help people um, keep focused? And again, keep things simple because un unfortunately people have an awful habit of complicating things that don't need to be complicated. <laughs> Seriously, I think that entrepreneurs are masters at making things as complex as possible, right? And so, I mean, the whole the whole nature of my business is about leaning out and it's getting mm -hmm. really super clear on the things that are most valuable for your customers and that are most profitable for the business and truly eliminating the rest of them. And it sounds so simple in theory and it is so difficult for people to do, as you mentioned, right? And so I think that having that lean strategic plan again and really looking back as is this in alignment with the vision that I have for my business? And so your vision helps you know if something is the right thing. When you then set goals um, and you set goals more in like a 90 day time block. So mm -hmm. you're just looking at the upcoming quarter. It helps you to say, is it the right thing right now? And I think right now is the key phrase there is be really realistic about what you can accomplish in a 90 day time period and focus on what's the right thing I need to be working on right now. And just don't worry about everything else. You don't have mm -hmm. to make a decision to not do it ever. You're just not doing it in the next 90 days because there's something that's a higher priority that's going to help you reach whatever those goals are and take you closer to your vision. And so I think that just systematizing it and simplifying it helps you to not get so overwhelmed by what do I have to say no to? You're just being super intentional and selective in what you're saying yes to. Yeah, I see. I really like that idea about, uh, you know, being super intentional and, and figure, focusing what you're saying yes to and kind of pushing the rest aside. And I think now it's for any business, whether it's a startup or whatever, looking, looking 90 days out is probably a very wise thing to do because let's face it, um, if we'd have looked 90 days out back in January, we certainly wouldn't have predicted where we would be, right? So, and I think therefore from now, having shorter time horizons, looking out and focusing on those is probably a smart thing to do for any business. 
Yeah, I agree. And, you know, back to earlier when I said, is it directionally correct? Mm -hmm. When you end up in a situation like we have this year, where it seems like, you know, every time we turn around, there's something different. It's really pulling us away from those plans that we probably had set for this year. The best thing you can ask yourself is, is this directionally correct? And make a lot of decisions based on that. Because you can't always create a very predictive plan, but as Mm -hmm. long as you know generally where you want to go and you're making decisions and taking actions that are in that right direction, you're still going to get there. You're still going to have profitability. You're still going to have success. It just may look a little bit different or sometimes pretty significantly different than what you thought it was going to. Yeah. And I think that's a great piece of advice for people because I know that's what a lot of uh, a lot of companies and that have struggled with over the last while um, during this, this strange um, world that we're living in today is that idea of, oh, my current market's a bit messed up, my customer base, they're not buying right now. So maybe I need to run over here or run over there. But as you say, I mean, if you look at if you look at is this generally in alignment? So, yes, maybe if I move slightly adjacent, it's OK because it's still in alignment. But if I do a complete like, you know, 180 or something, it may have serious consequences in the future. Yeah, absolutely. It's always business is always that balance of short term versus long term. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you have to make a short term decision, but you want to do that in a way that doesn't hurt you in the long term. And so again, it comes back to that directionally aligned. Is this something I would have done in the next 90 days normally? No. But will it still help me get where Mm -hmm. I want to go? And does it take me completely off path? You know, that's kind of the thinking that you want to take when you're looking at those um, pivots and those shifts in your business that are sometimes really necessary. Yeah. And then, and obviously, I mean, in a period like this where it's a little chaotic and everybody's, you know, has been running around. I mean, you talk about creating a space for what matters most to you. So how also do you help people, you know, take a little bit of a step back and create that creative space where they can figure out where they should uh, devote their energies? Because it always seems like we live in such a reactive culture that people don't take a step back and, and focus on and take time out to think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. It's one of the biggest uh, takeaways that people usually get when I talk to them is, Mm -hmm. wow, it's so nice to actually carve out time to work on my business instead of in my business. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so important. And the reality is you have to plan for it because it won't Mm -hmm. happen otherwise. Things will fill in, things that appear urgent that might not be will fill in. And so I help people structure their days and structure their weeks in a way that really does help them try to achieve balance at a macro level. Not necessarily balance on the day-to-day, but balance when you look across a 90-day period or even a year. And part of that time is you have to have space for innovation. You have to have space for strategy. Um, Just like you have time, uh, space that you create for your personal things. You Mm -hmm. also need to have that working on the business space that you create. And the very tactical tip that I give people is leverage focus blocks. You will get done the same things that you always got done a lot quicker, which will give you the ability to create that space if you work in a focus block and then take one of those focus blocks and dedicate it to innovation and strategy. So when you mean focus block, you mean um, blocking off a period of time for one single task? Um, It's either one activity or what I find usually works really well is a group of like activities. So it's not always realistic that you can actually work on something start to finish. But if you're jumping around between so many different things, you lose so much in task switching and sometimes you don't finish it. Whereas if Mm -hmm. you can group together um, some like activities, like if you're developing content, for example, you can get so much done so quickly and then everything is very cohesive. Um, And it just from a brand elevation perspective, both works really well, but it also saves you tremendous time. So basically, a lot of this is um, is you have to kind of get organized. Um, and I think that's and obviously organization and intentionality go hand in hand, right? Yep, it does. And that's the lean strategic planning, right? It's if you make it up, <laughs> you're only going to get yeah. so far. You have to right. at some point get really strategic about what you're doing and very planful about what you're doing. Create that space and that flexibility and adaptability in how you work. Um, but you still do have to at least know directionally where you're going. Mm-hmm. And you touched on something there that the idea of actually finishing things uh, as opposed to you know constantly just being busy doing things. And I think that's a trap a lot of people fall into is like never finishing. I know that's what I do at home with home tasks here. Definitely DIY tasks are always left half unfinished by me. But um, but in business, people end up doing the same thing, like starting a lot of things, but never finishing them. 
Yeah. So one of my favorite lean quotes is stop starting, start finishing. And Mm -hmm. I think it's so important. And what I usually encourage people is by midweek, if your work week is Monday through Friday, by Wednesday, you should be looking at all of the things that you said you were going to be doing in that week. And before you start a single new thing, you should finish everything that you have in progress. Even Mm -hmm. if it means you might not get to something that you thought you were going to get to, you will still end the week with your activities and your most important things being done. Um, And you won't end the week with a whole lot of time spent, but without you know, really anything to show for it. So I recommend doing that on a daily basis as well. But when people are first starting with that practice, at least doing that midweek check-in can be pretty helpful. Yeah, that's a fantastic suggestion. uh, Because like I said, I think most people could feel if they look at their to-do list, their to-do list tend to get longer and longer, but very few lines through any of their items, right? Mm -hmm, Of course. (laughs) So what's the last piece of advice you would give to uh, an entrepreneur or somebody in business now about how to lean their, lean their approach a little more? Yeah, absolutely. I'd say take the time to really define your vision. And I'm not talking about a vision statement, just that Mm -hmm. real vivid mental um, image of that future that you see for yourself, for your business and for your customer. Get clear on that and then start to break that down into goals and choose, try to choose one overarching goal for the next 90 days and just make sure that your day to day activities are in alignment with that goal. And don't worry about being too prescriptive in your planning. It's not about mapping out what you're going to do every single day at every hour. It's more just about are the things that I'm working on bringing me closer to my goal and is my goal realistic um, to actually achieve in this 90 days. And if you can do that, you will be amazed at not only the progress and speed at which you can move, it really will accelerate your results, but you'll also really quickly start to notice how many things you spent time on that actually weren't aligned to your vision and goals. Mm. Yeah. And I think that's a great piece of advice because I don't think people always are very clear in, in their vision of where they want to go. And you know, the old saying, if you don't know where you're going, any path will take you there, right? Mm-hmm. So <laughs> exactly. it is it is critically important that you have some directional um, focus. Listen, Krista, this has been great. Uh, all of Krista's information will be in her contributor bio, but please do uh, share with people a little bit more about yourself and your company. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So if people want to continue to interact, ask questions, I do have a private Facebook group where every single week I go live, I do training, um, and I really just let people answer questions or ask questions and I answer them. And so it's leanoutmethod.com slash groups. But I also really just love helping business owners, absolutely love helping them accelerate their results and really get super clear on what's important and eliminating anything that's not. I have a variety of programs and retreats and things that relate back to that. It's fantastic. And, you know, I always, uh, I always recommend people that the, 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 to, to reach out and look for help like this, help on coaching, how to run the business better and fun focus and all of these things that can definitely shortcut your, your, your route to success. Listen, uh, Krista, thanks again. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner, CRM CEO for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. 